TV! All right, Boxer, it helps if you're recording not in slow-mo. So I'm still in Melbourne, just come from doing top fuel on the weekend at Heathcote, Heathkit, however you pronounce it. Somehow Sydney and Melbourne have swapped ecosystems and it's still amazingly sunny here and in Sydney it's pissing down for the next 24 months. There's a man going sideways in a forklift there. So I've uh, just swung down to way out east to come and finally catch up with, well, one of the uh, legends from Car Builders who supported the Land Cruiser project. So I'm going to run in and annoy the crap out of him and have a look at their project that they're working on at the moment. So uh, see, Car Builders, Car Builders cool Chevy truck there and um, yeah let's go see what's going on look at this legend here you go oh we're gonna put this on I've been waiting for you to turn up mate I've got I know this. I came oh, last time and you weren't here prime real estate for you down here oh, now I don't Where have a All over it. Chubby. Chubb's on here. Mate, you got to earn your stripes to get on here. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, rest yeah. in peace, Laurie. Yeah, there's no free rides here. Yeah. Under the Barrel Brothers. Yeah. Nice. You need a full boot sticker on there as well. Like, there's a Howtech one. Yeah, we got the Halal Tech on there. Yeah. Bit of everything. So, this is the behind the scenes part of the uh, car builders workshop. This is where it is, and we're down on staff at the moment, so. <laughs> Um, we're keeping it real and we've got an install here on this D-Max. Now this is interesting for you guys that want to know the difference between a Colorado and a D-Max and now I'm not biased that I used to work at GM and worked on that last of the Colorados but this is a platform share out of Brazil and then Isuzu takes theirs and they do their thing to it and GM takes theirs. Isuzu's cheaper, here's why. Look, this is, this is not even bitumen loaded, this firewall blanket and then under here nothing just sheet metal you get very little dampening from factory so old mate's using this for touring we'll go through we'll insulate it we've done the roof we've done the rear wall we're going to carpet his rear wall we'll do his floor and his doors make it a bit quieter for him so that's that big old caravan thing yeah on the big back old of it, caravan yeah. grey nomad style yep um so we get them all in here what we had a six wheel drive is that across 79? the board on all d maxes in the, the platform share yeah, I mean, just the fact that it's out. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know the Luxo D-Maxes have the got all the leather and... The probably would. Now, the Rangers, if you have a look over here, now this is the carpet out of it. The Rangers and BT-50s are a bit better where they actually co-mould like a sound blocking vinyl, what we call mass loaded vinyl, to the underlay. So yep. you actually do get something that, that they are quieter, but on the lower spec stuff, whether it's an LX or LS, whatever they call it, um, they're going to take it out and just give you the pulp pack and bring the price down as much as they can. But on those, like a wild track, that sort of thing, it's going to be insulated quite well. But I, I myself wouldn't pull one apart and do it because I don't think you're going to get the results as you would with, say, a 70 series or these base model um, vehicles. Easy way to tell them is, do they have carpet on the rear wall? This had nothing, so it's got no trim, nothing. You know, it's going to be lean. So we can add to it, you know, make it more comfortable so, to drive. Lesser known fact. Yep. 
is that you actually have a background in this from a manufacturing point of view. You're not just some guy sticking stuff in a car. No, so um, I did 15 years at GM in design. Um, my role there was managing the fabrication studio, but we'd dissect cars, we'd work on a lot of the stuff, all the fun stuff was the concept car builds, but we'd also do the, you know, engineering for production where, you know, interesting one with the VE, um, and they released, a, I think it was a book, The Million Dollar Baby, yep. and they had to cut funds out of that because we overspent on the development of the car and where they cut it out was in the NVH. So your first VE versus like a Series 2, then they add it back in. Common, like we'll get phone calls from people with Mazda 3s, and I think it was around that 2011, shape change, new architecture, they cut what's not seen out of it to the consumer and just get it out and get it out there. People want the new shape, they'll buy it, but it's usually, you know, had things cut out of it that then later get added back into it. So, hang on, I'm just going to turn this around for a second just to ask you this question on camera. Yeah. Are you the guy that's responsible for that ridiculous handbrake in the VE? No. That's and where that square all, sort yeah, of console yeah. based where handbrake. Where they all come across was they were trying to, you know, they did a symmetrical IP so that you could export the car or the, the US would buy it. Bigger uh, yeah, so it the same. yeah, it was just weird. Like you can't do handbrake, but then the VF had the button. So yeah, it was yeah. annoying. And we had to model and gap that and you're always chasing gaps and margins on it where you couldn't get it to fit right. No, that's, <laughs> um, that's interior design. All right, let's, uh, let's, um, let's uh, have a look at what's going so on. So have a look at the fun stuff here. Well, let's skip past this one first. Cause that's the one that's uh, the one, one that I'm mainly keen to see. Oh, okay. Oh, we've got the old 71 C10 up here. So this is just one of our um, shop trucks. To 350, dead stock truck, old guy restored it. I bought it out of Fresno. Um, it's quite a clean resto. We've been driving it uh, now and then. The gearbox is um, packed it in. It's a 350. So I've got a turbo 350 out of this 55, which this 55 has been in, geez, our family for nearly 20 years. Um, this is a full rebuild at the moment. I've got the chassis. If you come over here, don't trip over, mate. So we've got a motor there for you. I'll turn on some lights. The proper old school Chevy rock covers there. Yeah, so they're, um, these are actually a cast aluminium. I bought a couple of sets, the finned Corvette style ones. So made in the good old US and of A. Um, We've got them. So the motor's just had a freshen up at the moment. We've put a lumpy cam in it. We're about to paint the block. New pistons, rings, what have we. The 55, so this is an Australian delivery car, which I believe these were pressed in Canada and assembled locally. May have even been Fisherman's Bend. Um, you Adelaide folk might disagree with me. Uh, but basically we're going to re-equip this car. So I bagged this car, I don't know, years and years ago. Maybe about 2005, six. Um, it was never low enough, it was leaf sprung. We quickly put a four link in, drove to Newcastle and back, but that had issues because we're pushing it through the floor pan. So it needs tunneling, um, but then we end up re-clipping it. So we've got some profiles here that we've laser cut. So I've drawn all this rear end, which will basically put the chassis on the table, jig it all up, and then um, this will be the new rear clip, which is all laser cut and interlocks together. So this is gonna run, what do we set up in this? A parallel four link, and I've got a triple convoluted bag. So those guys that know these cars know they've got a really low guard opening, and you lower them so much that the droop on the axle, you can't get the wheel off if you wanna change it, which is a pain. But I've managed to get like nearly 240 mil of travel in the suspension, which is gonna help. Um, the other thing is what your, your instant center on your angle, side view angles of your arms is, is a real pain too, because you wanna pull the arms up to get all your geometry working, but the rear occupants hip points right here. So we will squeeze that up, we'll massage the floor a little bit, uh, but we wanna retain that factory rear cushion and you know be able to take the family out for a drive in it this car's a cruiser it's not meant to be you know a wheel stand muscle car it'll make the right noise it'll be low but basically original trim as far as the outside we're trying to convince adrian whose car it is not to paint it green and cream because it's just beige and old man and i think i've got him over the line with black 
Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, so we'll sort out some wheels for it too, so it's got oh, you're that. you going to do with hair like that too? Uh, no, it wasn't. That was the other colour. If I said if we're keeping it green and cream, I'll, I'd like to go like this, but he wasn't interested, so we might have him over the line at black. But this is a slow burn, a slow build, this car, no rush. Yep. You want to actually enjoy it, not yep. be one of those cars that you're thrashing on and then you've got all the issues. So yep. slow after hours thing. Yeah, yeah. And as far as the big project, the big project. Poor old, poor old Mitch over here. He's come over thinking we were just going to go out for a quick bite to eat, and now we're doing a full-on <laughs> video production. Yeah. And sorry, you, you, you know Mitch. No, don't. No, how are you, no. Mitch? So I'm still recording here. This is Mitch from Mackie Lake. Hello. How are you, mate? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, mate. So Mitch is uh, only five minutes up the road. Oh, he's yeah. going to be yeah, uh, helping yeah, yeah. me wire up the drag car. Oh, perfect. So cool. he's, uh, I'm reason, sure Mitch has got some tools with Reasonably good at that. So, yeah. uh, Make yourself at home, mate. Yeah, so when you need some wiring done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, funny you say yeah. that. I've got a few wires. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how many people go, like, if you need wiring done, and they go, oh, actually, now that you say that. Look, I can hook you, at, hook you up with some sheet metal stuff. Um, yeah, oh, I've, I've got a CNC um, pan brake. Um, oh, do you? CNC folder, CNC pan brake, guillotine. Oh, wicked. Yeah, yeah so if you ever need anything. Stuff, so, uh, yeah, if you need But we do have a booth. Yeah, so, the booth is nice, I like yeah. it. Yeah, obviously this is on a GQ chassis mm. and it's Toyota, so you've, we've got basically Pamela Anderson here yeah. in a day, not, not now, who knows, or poor old, um, what was her name? Christine Aguilera, well, um, <laughs> small body on a, you know, larger chassis, so we're going all poke as much track with. So the whole philosophy behind this is the compliance for yeah. us. Um, so it's basically rebodied, in a sense of I don't need to push the, you know, space the wheels or get massive offset on everything. We're be compliant with offset and everything. It's going to have massive track width yeah. for this model car. So it's technically be registered as a patrol or as patrol. A... But I'm told, speaking to some mates, they were saying it's you. There's a way to do it where you wrong terminology, but, but retire the VIN and apply for a new one. Oh yeah. Um, a way to get around it. Uh, so, and traditionally you would have registered as a patrol, but then you got that identity thing, which the stolen cars, that's the big thing that and they're the trying to stop. And might look at it and go, hang on, that's not a patrol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not yeah. a patrol, is he dodging yeah. plates, what's he doing? Yeah. Um, so I don't know what, it'll be registered as such, but it, there's a process for us to retire, then register a new one and everything's good. But it's, it's all legit as far as compliance goes, it's pre um airbag, all ADR stuff stacks up. Yep. Um, so we've stayed away from that. So it's got an LS. So it's pretty simple, really. I bought a, I, I searched for a, a truck, and then you go, oh, you know, at that stage, a converted LS Patrol, whether you're chasing a, a GQ or GU, was still high teens, and it'd be a box. You know, it's ready to burn down with the wiring on it. Funny story. So then I found a guy selling um, a rolling chassis with an LS in it that's got a hole in the block. He actually bought a GU single cab, had it five days burnt down in his driveway. Wiring issue. So then he bought this one that a guy had rolled and figured I'll use this and then he just gave up and went, it's too hard, I'm over my head. So I picked this up cheap off him. Um, we picked up another LS. So it's got all the adapter stuff for it. So it's mechanically, we're not recreating the wheel or inventing anything. It's there, it's got to make a noise. It'll go hard enough for how we're going to use this car. Um, it, instead of shortening the chassis, so it's about 350 mil difference in wheelbase between the two cars. So this is a first gen 84 to 88 Hilux Forerunner, Hilux Surf, whatever you want to call it, depending where you're from. Um, first of the, I like these things because they were kind of the first of the SUV thing, and they, well, for us they were. I mean, you had Blazers and yeah, yeah. all that sort of stuff, but for that JDM market and what we got here, they were pretty cool, underpowered piece of thing. Mm. Um, and in the mini truck days, my first vehicle was an extended cab version of one of these, so I know the platform, and they're pretty straightforward, um, and they're all modular, so. Going back to the wheelbase, instead of shorten the wheelbase, I thought we'd just fudge it. I'm going to make new guards for it anyway, so the dash to axle can be longer. Uh, our guards are pushing around 190 mil extra fat that we've got to put in them. So I can absorb the styling so it doesn't look like this V12 thing because it's going to have so much pump in it. So what we're going to do here, and you said we've roughed it out, on the, got ahead of ourselves and roughed it out because we had a full drive meet down here. Packed it with foam, we'll then style that up with clay, push and pull and argue over that little nah that looks good and get to a surface that we're happy with and then we'll scan that so we'll sort out the front guard sort out the rear guard scan them and then finesse them a little bit i don't think we'll do much in in, in math and mirror them and basically cut two female cavity tools 
um, and then laminate straight into them as composite, as glass, and then put them on and finesse the... We've got to surface them anyway, so we'll finite the lines, but they'll be pretty good. Um, so basically composite guards, engineer wants us to do a steel hood for crumple zone stuff. It's not a big deal. I'm thinking of finding a Land Cruiser or 80 series hood. Um, we conscious not to make it look like you've put a BA Falcon hump on everything, you know, it's tacky. So I could probably find a Toyota hood that's got the length and is oversized. Yes. And then we can basically drop a line in plan view and basically hem the edge. Um, and then just adapt the nose to suit the curve of the bonnet. So we're not welding in the middle and destroying the middle and then got to bog the hell out of it. Mm. We basically hem the edge over so it's factory. Our guard has the ability to match whatever that surface is yep. and it's only that small catwalk area. And then the nose is just match it to the grill. So a small blend across there. That sheet metal's got a lot of structure in it too. So mm. it's not as if we're going to distort a panel. We can get a nice finish on it. Um, so in short, uh, this will have like an 80s throwback to it. Um, where it wants to be more like a beach cruiser truck, something big lifted that you see rolling down the boulevard. Um, not so much our, you know, what we, uh, an overland monster, um, but something cool that's streetable and it's got plenty of stance on it with a little bit of Back to the Future and a little bit of, I, I guess, that Baja sort of thing. So who's Marty and who's Doc then? I don't even got the hair for either of those. So. Yeah. And Adrian's probably too short, so we're going to have to get somebody in. We do have, uh, we do have, we do have a bunch of stuff up there from the good people from Superior. So uh, the yeah. guys at Superior know patrols. Um, so very much they've hooked us up with everything we need to make this thing big and legal in that sense. So it's going to have all the gear under it. At the moment, I'm carrying over the front work you see here. Is I've got another patrol because once you get invested in patrols you just pick them up everywhere i've got another one that i i got for i got it for a trans tunnel cut and these wheels just as a uh, to sort us out for the right track width um but we had inner guard so what and the inner guards already you know they've packaged it over all the suspension that's there our only issue is it's too short so we'll basically extend it and then adapt the front um the plan is to make the rad support bolt off the thing yep. i always hated with these japanese trucks and anyone who's done the engine conversion is the body's on you to get the motor out. You end up cutting it here to get it out just yeah. for the ease. So playing with these old Chev pickups, everything bolts off. You're kind of like, this is cool. It sucks for gapping everything. But if we can make this rad support bolt off, it's much easier if we have an issue that you can pull it in and out later yep. on down the track. So I'm at that stage. We'll try and get a few hours on it this week. And um, we've got to get this thing to the... 4x4 four four show in August at a presentable stage. It's not going to be finished, but people want to see a working progress. So That's the Melbourne 4x4 four four show? Melbourne 4x4 four yep. four show, yeah. So hopefully we'll get the chassis sorted, rolling, painted, all nice. Um, and uh, it should be raw, but hopefully we've got the guards all styled and sorted out by that stage. So nice. time's on. We'll get some shots of this. So on the motor, it's 5.7. Uh, it's, 5 .7. 5 .7. it's got one of those things on it. Yep. Yep. So you sort of your options are open really with what you want to do with the engine now. Yeah. Yeah. So this is HQ Car Builders. This is where all the goods come out. So from this us. This is what pays for what you, happens next door. It does, mate. Yeah. Um, so reinvesting in good things, car people. So full of product. This is one of three. Um, we've got our sales team in the office over here, so they're taking your calls or, or or sorting out online inquiry, international inquiry. Um, small showroom in there, uh, but dominantly this is set up for supplying our B2B and our, I guess, B2C customers, which are typically your online stuff. So not so much of a store come in and say hello. Um, that's what we've got retailers for. But as you can see, getting through the orders there, uh, peel and stick heat shield that they're stocking up, getting through that. Monday's a big day usually. It's, um, I think we had pallets out there ready to go out, uh, of all the orders processed online or anywhere from Friday to today. Um, so come in and we'll show you the showroom. And just for the people that don't know already, this is all the stuff that's in the Land Cruiser. So you possibly would have seen this at the um, shows. We take this to the trade shows, which is a cutaway of a uh, 
small vehicle. You never guess what it is. Who's that guy on the screen there? Yeah, yeah very similar, isn't he? Good yes. looking bloke, eh? good looking rooster. Yeah. Uh, but this has got all the product displayed to show you where to put it as far as your insulation, everything under your carpet, your door or store kits. And then we've got heat shields and everything on the, I guess, the firewall side, underside. So anything sound and heat is what we specialise. And we chase that factory look as far as what manufacturers use or you're trying to get that factory finish, particularly with that um premium underbonnet which i'm not sure if we used it on your no because i got a fiberglass bonnet but yeah. i did definitely use these and these are awesome well we have refined this too yeah you see you would have the opaque one this oh, is the yeah. clear one so you yep. can pick up all the holes and see it uh, but yeah. that gives you a factory um sealant on there yep that you can and this is heavier than the factory one some of the factory ones are disappointingly like glad wrap but you can get into here I'd usually cut that with a knife and peel it off. You can access whatever you need to and put it back on. So that comes conveniently in a, in a large sheet that you can make it suit your own. It'll even fit those tall combis. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I learned the yep. hard way. It never used to when we had to make it taller. Ah. <laughs> And so I've got the one with the cartoons on it. What was the uh, what was that the, was the limited the edition? That? Yeah. that was the artist edition where we had um, David Vincent, who's a French artist, would you believe? Um, automotive artist does some really cool stuff. We stumbled across him, and we had him do a few. Um, actually, this is some of his artwork here. So we had him do a range of cars, even the Mad Max. That's actually Matt James's car. A sled, we had done a Jeep on there, and we'd done a drift car, and we put that all together as like a, a wallpaper or a sticker bomb thing, and that was printed on it. That was a limited edition thing, you were lucky enough to get it. Um, but well, that's why I never covered covered it over, though. I left it like the car builder's cathedral in the back of the car, so yeah, yeah, but otherwise, it's standard black or silver, it's yep. the same, it's just a color choice. Everything's black these days, people want black, so we've got the black. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, and then all the other gear and, and a soon to be happy customer. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs>